Admiral State located in the northeastern part of Nigeria has the vegetation of savanna, guinea savanna and semi-arid zone that is suitable for agricultural production. The population is predominantly farmers. Adamawa State over the years has witnessed a series of agricultural initiatives which have raised farmers' interest for agriculture. Considering the potentials lying fallow in the subsector, these can be harnessed by any visionary and passionate government with the heart for development and the urge to salvage its people from poverty. Well, uh, let me go back to the recent history once again. When we came in in 2015, the governor, the first thing he did was to do uh, uh, a survey uh, once again to establish like uh, 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 what what the conditions were at the time, so that we will see uh, what we are progressing toward. And so uh, uh, to establish this, we did a rapid survey and found that Adama farmers are producing on 232,000 hectares. So now 232,000 hectares in the rainy season of uh, 2015 for all the various commodities that are produced in the state. The next season, 2016, we carried out another survey and we saw that the uh, amount of land that's put under production has grown to 480,000 hectares. Now this clearly demonstrated that uh, uh, Adama people do not need a lot of advocacy to be able to decide for themselves that agriculture is really the sector to be in. And clearly uh, uh, this goes along with our thinking. When we carried out the survey in 2017, we concluded that Adama farmers have actually put 1,015,000 hectares under production. So. While we do some advocacy, uh, we won't credit ourselves with all the uh, encouragement that went to make people to decide that agriculture is a sector of choice for them. With the emergence of His Excellency Senator Muhammadu Umaru Jibrila Bindo as Executive Governor of Adamawa State, no stone is left unturned in policies to ensure full participation of critical stakeholders such as youth, women, civil servants, traditional leaders, corporate associations, government and non-governmental organizations, and interested individuals to key into farming as a business for sustainable development of the state. What has been your experience in this mobilization process, Honorable Commissioner of Agriculture, Alaji Amadou Haruna Waziri? Yes, uh, you know, um, when our governor was sworn in, uh, in May 2015, uh, we came in at a very difficult time when resources were at the lowest uh, until the time that we, we came. Uh, when very little attention was paid to uh, the rural populace and especially the farming community and uh, we realized that it was farmers that voted uh, uh, this government into place. It was farmers predominantly. 85% uh, of the population of Adama depend directly or indirectly on agriculture for their livelihoods. So when we came in, we realized that we had to work for the people that brought us into power. And the governor instructed that uh, we should look at what support uh, uh, services that the previous government may have, or preparations and arrangements that the previous government may have left on the ground for farmers so that we'll continue implementing. Uh, to our greatest shock, there was nothing, nothing at all. Even though we were in the middle of the rainy season, there was no 
provisions made for uh, input support to farmers, uh, let alone mechanization. And you know, uh, the seven northernmost local government areas also are just coming out of the insurgency. So it was very difficult for the government, it was very difficult for the people of Adamawa. So the first thing that the governor ordered was uh, for uh, some fertilizer to be made available to the people, even though it was uh, quite deep into the season. If it was made uh, quickly available, then a lot of uh, farmers will still uh, benefit from its availability. So this uh, the government set out to do immediately, and within weeks we started seeing fertilizer uh, coming into the state. Realizing agriculture as a science that demands practical approach from demonstration and application of scientific technology. The Bindo Lady administration found it paramount to bring the challenges faced by farmers in the past to an end by providing basic farm inputs to farmers in all the 21 local government areas of the state. The Honorable Commissioner of Agriculture speaks further. Adamawa State, I'm happy to say, is one of those states that has tremendous potential as far as agriculture is concerned. We have close to 4 million hectares of land in Adamawa State and of that less than half of it is actually, uh, much less than half of it is actually uh, under production. Uh, of the 4 million hectares, our estimates are that uh, about 2.6, 2.9 million hectares are completely suitable for arable agriculture. Now, from our latest uh, rapid survey on agricultural production in the state during the current rainy season, we have discovered that about a million hectares is under production. So almost uh, two million hectares more is still yet to be touched, is still yet to be put under production. Adama has tremendous potential uh, to, to grow its agriculture. Also we have the two rivers, the Gongola and the Benue passing through the state bringing a lot of water. Uh, there are numerous smaller rivers uh, crisscrossing the whole state. Uh, there are areas where water is stored throughout there so that you can do irrigation agriculture very easily. There is no local government area where you cannot do irrigation agriculture. Our people's heritage is agriculture. So this government realizes all this and our governor is giving us all the support that we require to see that we convert this potential into reality and that is what we are working on. In addition, the Admiral State Government under the State Ministry of Agriculture in an effort to boost agricultural production through irrigation have scaled up production by identifying key clusters of dry season farmers and supported them with irrigation facilities such as seeds and irrigation water pumps to ease their farming activities which in turn has led to unprecedented increase in the production output. First and foremost, I would love to appreciate His Excellency and his deputy. Because I think uh, this is the first time agriculture is getting support 
because of the importance of agri to what is happening now in the economy of the country and the state. The ministry on its own part appreciates the gesture from government and honestly the ministry is ready. Talk about manpower, we have all it takes to turn the economy of Adama State around and even Nigeria as a country. We have our extension agents that are working assiduously with the farmers at the grassroots. It is a government that has gone down to the grassroots to help farmers improve on their food production. Training and retraining. I'm sure you have witnessed the training of farmers last year. About um, 40,000 farmers were trained on best practices on agriculture for increased food production. We have been partnering with a lot of uh, NGOs because we know resources nowadays are not easily, they are not easy to come by. So we partner with NGOs who assist in training of our extension agents so that they can now go down to the grassroots and train the farmers. And talk about input. You know, farming is time line. If it's time, it's time bound. For the first time, we've been able to give farmers input as at when we. And I think uh, it's a great development in Africa. Land preparation is one of the critical areas of concern to farmers in the state which at the end of every production, if not done properly, has effects on crop yield of the farmers. Senator Mohamed Umaru Jibrila, in line with his vision of making farmers adapt agriculture as business and appealing to the farmers through mechanization, in 2016, went ahead and procured 105 tractors with complete sets of traction implements and distributed them to the 21 local government areas of the state. I would say uh, straight away that uh, mechanization will make all the difference in, in our agriculture. It's only in this part of the world that we even begin to talk about mechanization as compared to non-mechanization because uh, agriculture elsewhere is uh, integral uh, with mechanization. One of the earliest observations we made when we came in as a government was that there was total absence of any kind of mechanization in our agriculture. This is the agriculture that's been practiced by our forefathers for centuries. Uh, there were periods in our history in, in, in this country and in this state especially uh, that government may have procured some agricultural equipment to mechanize agricultural production but they were looked at as novelties at the time. This is no longer the case because uh, everything every other aspect of our lives uh, has advanced. Uh, it's only the agriculture that appears to not have. And agriculture is probably the most important uh, uh, vocation uh, as far as we should be concerned. Um, now, the governor, when we came in, um, directed that we should bring up a plan very quickly to see how we can impact on the production efficiencies, the productivities, and, and the amount of output uh, in our agriculture in the state. And uh, that directive gave rise to a quick decision that uh, before anything, we should buy 
agricultural tractors with implements uh, to match with them to at least uh, begin to show that uh, we know what we're doing and you know mechanization is uh, has no alternative or there is no alternative to it and so on so straight away uh, through the local government system the state procured 105 tractors with uh, uh, harrows and with plows to begin with this are uh, Massive Ferguson 70, 72 horsepower tractors. Uh, these were delivered and were distributed uh, throughout uh, the state to the local government councils. We reasoned that uh, taking this equipment to the local government made more sense than anything uh, because that is actually where the mechanization is required. Uh, keeping them in the state capital uh, and uh, managing them from the state level uh, would not make sense to our farmers who are at the grassroots level and who would like the convenience of being able to just wake up any morning and go and book for the services uh, of a tractor and expect that the same day the tractor will be on their farm or at any rate not more than a day or two after they book for these services. Governor Mohamed Umaru Jibrila felt it imperative to resuscitate the lost glory of the agricultural extension system that has been instrumental to educating farmers in the 1970s, which had laid the nation to food sufficiency and produced the groundnut pyramids for export. I am Honorable Yusuf Mohamed, the executive chairman of Madagascar local government. At the first place, I think I will give kudos so His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Adam State. I think for the past, if I'm not mistaken, 20 years, local government never had a brown new tractor until the architect of the new Adama came to the help of local government to provide a brand new five tractors and farm implements to each of the 21 local government at the most state. And to be sincere, it has boost agricultural production in this state. Before, it's very difficult for people of this state to assess or to get tractors to plug their farm. Either they will be coming from Taraba or Borno or Gombe. But now it's we that are sending our tractors because of its availability to other states. So, uh, to be sincere, Governor Bindo has did very wonderful in boosting agricultural production in other states, especially even fertilizer. Fertilizer were supply, we were given to 21 local government at an early, before planting uh, season. Likewise, seedling, water pumps to local governments for both dry and rainy season. So I think uh, Bindo is doing wonderful in all aspects to make sure that we have uh, uh, food surplus in Adamawa State in collaboration with the Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Commissioner, who is an expert in that field. There is no doubt agriculture is the mainstay of many nations in Africa, including Nigeria. Could this be the reason why the federal government under President Muhammad Buhari has designed and adopted so many result-oriented developmental strategies that will help reduce unemployment and poverty through agriculture? 
This passion by the federal government is replicated as the Bindo led administration has keyed into every agricultural initiative introduced by the federal government that would help improve the living standard of the people. What has been the agricultural initiative adopted by the state government and in what way has it impacted on agriculture in the state? In Adama State, uh, before we came, uh, there is or oh, there are a number of initiatives that were going on that had gone on, uh, which we had hoped we would find legacies of so that we can build on and so on. Now, the latest uh, scheme uh, that has come to town is the Accelerated Agriculture Development Scheme uh, that is uh, funded by the Central Bank of Nigeria, no less. Uh, this is a scheme that is intended specifically for young people, uh, unemployed young people between the ages of 18 and 35, to be able to do anything along some chosen commodity value chains. Here in Adama, we have chosen uh, the maize value chain and also livestock value chain. Uh, in the livestock value chain, of course, I mean, there are several possible value chains, including uh, uh, such as beef production, for instance, or dairy production, and any other such uh, uh, value chains that may be allied to that. Uh, what this means is that uh, potential beneficiaries can peg which component of the value chain or at what level of the value chains they would like to participate and they will describe their projects and so on and then the CVN undertakes to fund uh, these activities to 100%, 100% without any kind of collateral. The state government is expected to guarantee the loans uh, with an irrevocable standing payment order when the uh, loans are uh, mature, due for repayment and so on. So in Adama State, we are working very hard to implement this. Uh, the CBN had indicated that uh, it requires every state to nominate at least 10,000 young people to benefit from this, at least. Here in Adama, already in the dry season, we are looking at well over 10,000. Come the rainy season, hopefully, we will be able to submit names of over 100,000 potential beneficiaries. This is a very important scheme, in my opinion, because uh, uh, it gives you the possibility of mopping up all the unemployed young people in our cities, in our towns, uh, in the countryside and also, you know, because of the uh, uh, approaching uh, days of politics, usually it's the young people that are used as incendiary to create problems and so on. When they are uh, profitably employed, who would have the time to get involved in all the violence uh, associated with that kind of politics? So I see it as a strategic and also uh, uh, a very uh, exciting uh, scheme uh, for states to implement. Here in Adama State, we are putting everything that we have to see that we succeed in implementing this scheme. In Mubi, there is nothing to hide. We are all doing our best to see that, first of all, peace reigns and progress. And I want to assure all those concerned this program will be a success. And then the youth are going to get what is right for them. Farmers, traders, and press. And we'll do our best. Because I have 24 districts, and I will invite all the district heads, inform them the mission of the Central Bank. Let them go to their own districts, inform the villagers, the district and the water and the people concerned. And then let them bring me the data. So that we will investigate and see how far we can go. It's good that under this tenure, 
far as any, you know, what is dividends of democracy? Um, do you know that every week, not less than 50 trailer loads of rice leaves this kingdom? So if there's any priority of manifest, it shall be rice. People will complement it with the uh, place that I'm still requesting. Nigeria's economy, particularly in the past, is based on the oil production, but the present government has decided to diversify the economy and it has identified two key areas, particularly solid minerals and agriculture. Agriculture been the mainstay of our economy in the past. I think it is in the right direction for the federal government to visit agricultural production in this country. And in particular, the most populated group in this country are the youth. If we don't take care of the youth, definitely we are ruining our future. The future of agriculture is what we are very excited about in this state. Uh, Adama State has tremendous potential, everybody agrees. And we intend to exploit that potential for the benefit of Adama farmers. We have managed in our thinking, in our planning, to tie all the uh, ends together to, to, to create the linkages uh, not just for production until now everybody's looking at production agriculture but now we have succeeded in creating the linkages between all the various components of the value chains for all the commodities that are produced in Adama. We have looked extensively at the production of all the various commodities. We have looked at the challenges associated with the preservation and storage of different commodities. We have looked at the technologies involved in both the preservation and the processing of the various technologies we have looked at markets, so we have looked at the needs of markets, that is the packaging needs of markets and so on for all our various technologies. And bottom line is to get different types of investors involved, interested in producing, in processing and in marketing products in and from. Adama State, we think we have tremendous potential. Now if we take our blueprint, it's a, it, it features uh, six bouquets of activities. Each bouquet has a lot of uh, different different activities that are related, that are in, uh, can be integrated and so on. And looking at them, uh, we realize that there is a need, first of all, for government to show its presence everywhere in the state. Today, the story of agriculture in Adam State under Senator Muhammadu Umaru Jibrilabindo has changed. Farmers can now make business through agriculture. Many have enough from their produce to feed their families and the excess for sale and attend other socio-economic activities. The testimonies confirm the reality of the impact of the Bindo's pragmatic approach to agricultural development.